Hey y'all, welcome back to Serene Queen TV. I am here to talk about Chloe, Holly, and Beyonce. And the what I believe, not facts, because I don't know these people, but just from the outside looking in, I am picking up on some more stuff that I believe is going on than the average person. And I'm gonna break that down here. Okay, let's start off. The origin story, Chloe and Holland's or Chloe and Holly's origin story. They want the public to believe that Beyonce found them on YouTube. Um, having a hard time believing that when there is a picture of Chloe Bailey um, with Beyonce on the set of Fighting Temptations because Chloe played a young Beyonce in that film, and um, so that just proves that. Chloe was in the industry years before being discovered on YouTube. She was also in the Tyler Perry film, Meet the Browns. And I think a couple other, like she had a couple other small acting gigs like throughout her childhood that like we can pinpoint on the internet. But she, just some, you know, discovered under a fucking bush. Uh, not really. Algorithm ain't that tight. And you know, they're doing that for a reason though, because it's like, okay, well, why? Well, I think they're doing that for a reason because it's, it's the cover up that their industry plants or that their MK ultra children or, you know, whatever. Cause MK ultra is a real mind control program and it takes, you know, sometimes years to ritually abuse somebody to the point that their personality splits into, um, several different people um a, a also known as did i was going to say aka well yeah aka did dissociative um identity disorder also used to be called multiple personality disorder mk ultra is a government program that strategically does this that like you you purposely put someone through satanic ritual abuse to split their mind and turn them into a um like a robot, like a human robot. And many, many celebrities, you know, most of them are under MK Ultra, uh, mind control. And, um, and it works. And the elites, like the people that you don't see, they, they run these puppets and they press buttons on these robots and they sing and they dance like they should until they start to break down. But, um, but that's what I think is kind of going on here. I think them, uh, Parkwood, um, or Beyonce's company, whatever. I don't want to get sued, but I think their label, Chloe and Chloe and Holly's label just wants to cover up their backstory because they want you to believe it's organic. They want you to believe it's pure raw talent and that it's not a machine behind them, but there definitely is more to it because let's talk about the obvious. Okay. Plenty of parents, turn their children over to the industry every day. But it's a little bit strange the way the Bailey sisters' parents don't seem to be involved in their careers at all. Like, you know, Beyonce's parents are, um, you know, Tina is still super involved. Matthew was very, very involved. He's a major factor in why she is who she is today. You know, Michael Jackson's parents, you know, super involved. Usher's mother involved. Like, the successful celebrities tend to have, you know, a parent involved. That parent may be a handler them damn selves. You know, they, again, turn their children over to Moloch or turn their, a.k.a. the industry. But Moloch is a satan satanic deity, um, a representation of the devil himself. But it's like, you know, either way, throwing your child to the fire. But the Bailey sisters, their parents are not around them, which leaves them vulnerable for handlers to have control. Now, according to an article um, that I had, I'm going to put, put pics in, their father was a stockbroker who I think quit his job to really focus on their careers. And um, he's highly abusive, though. Like, he's super abusive and he was abusing their mother and he got charged with some some abuse uh stuff so you know he's an abusive parent and a lot of celebrities come from abusive households because it's um 
it's great when they do because it's easier for the industry to split their mind and do MK Ultra on them. Or again, those parents might be um, people affiliated with the industry themselves who owe their child to the industry like their child may be chosen i mean this is like a real thing because look at that movie paranormal activity those people in that movie were going through what they were going through because the child in the house was promised to a satanic deity and it took a few generations for them to get a boy but once they got a boy the deity came looking for that motherfucker and kept like causing havoc all around the house until they got the baby so this stuff is real. People do promise their children over a satanic bloodline is the whole reason why the world is fucked up the way it is. So their backstory with their father is a little weird. I can see why they would want to get away from their father, but it's just like, okay, you know, what's going on with their mom? You know, like she just is cool with her daughters being under the supervision of Beyonce and Tina who are obviously sketchy (laughs) I don't know something about it is weird and I'm going to get into a theory as I keep going so um you know these two young girls have been with Beyonce for years they claim that they've been doing all this vocal training and all this training to turn them into superstars but it's just like where because Chloe where is her career really going like i you know, no, no, nobody really see, is seeing it for her. We're rooting for her. We want her to win because we know she has talent. But what's going on is really sad. And it just looks like a big, giant, satanic ritual or, like, humiliation ritual or sacrifice going on in front of our faces because it's truly heartbreaking, especially as a person that creates myself. I don't make music, but... Um, I paint and I draw and I'm and I am a published writer. It's really sad to see an uh, artist like Chloe just be sabotaged so 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 bad. It, it it hurts when your talent is being sat on. Like I've left jobs behind that. If I'm at a job and I feel like they're not, you know, they're trying to like box me in, I leave because it's like you're not going to kill me. If that kills somebody to sit on their talent and shrink them. And that's what's going on because, again, let's talk about Chloe's first single. Um, as a solo artist, uh, Have Mercy, I never heard it because I knew it was demonic. How about that? I've never heard the song. I've seen the video, not the whole thing, but enough because I did, I've seen a lot of it because I did an article on it about Jelani Day because that whole video was connected to. Johnny Day's murder and disappearance. Like, again, a ritual. Like, it's a fucking ritual. It's, it was super weird. But, um, you know, have mercy. Like, it was here today, gone tomorrow. Like, it hasn't stuck. And everything else I've heard by Chloe, it's like, again, her voice is beautiful, but she's singing the wrong songs. And I just felt like, again, Have Mercy was too demonic. That's why I didn't want to listen to it, because I had a bad fucking dream after even seeing the visuals for that fucking the video. I had a bad, I had a horrible dream. I had sleep paralysis after that shit. That's why I never heard it, because a lot of that shit is um, backmasked, where it's like, if you play that shit backwards, it's the most heinous shit you ever want to hear. They're saying some so like they're demonic. They're doing demonic chants on the back side or the flip side of the record. You know, Alice the Crowley taught them. But when it comes to again, Haley or Chloe, um, she she hasn't really had like anything blow up since. Have Mercy was like was like uh, McDonald's fries. You know, can't let that shit sit too long, and then is 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 dead. So, um. It didn't really stick. And then she hasn't had anything like really blow up after. Like, again, people are rooting for her. But Normani, like, it has, I think, more steady Spotify listeners than Chloe. And Chloe is out here doing the most. They're both doing the most. But Chloe has a big team behind her. And here's the other T. You know, what's her name? Uh, Normani. She's with Rock Nation. And this is why I'm talking about the Carters because they have a really, really good strategy for how they do things. They they do things the, the classic music industry way. I personally believe 
Jay-Z went after Normani and Beyonce went after the Chloe or Chloe and Haley, those Bailey sisters. They they signed them because they wanted to get the competition out of the way. They have big plans for Blue Ivy because she's, you know, bloodline and already has a she's already chosen, you know, like how can she lose if she's already chose? She's already chosen and she's already been offered over, you know, if you know what I mean. So, Blue Ivy has no choice but to be in the entertainment industry. She doesn't have a choice. She's She's got to, like, you know, do movies or music or whatever. She just, she can't, like, just be like a, you know, just try to lay low. Because she's, there's a prophecy for her. And that's what comes a part of, like, the deal when you sign some of these contracts. You know, it's not just your soul. It's, like, the soul of, like, other people, too. If you want to, you know, live it up, you know, forever, live la vida loca forever. So Chloe and Holly were signed to get competition out of the way. That's been obvious, you know. Um, Normani should be bigger. Why is she not getting more of a push? Um, Megan is the only thing really popping that Rock Nation. And even again for her, is it really sudden like that? No. You know, Rock Nation, I think they used to have Doja Cat, but they end up fumbling that bag. You know, Rihanna's, Rihanna and Megan are like the only two artists. Uh, well, Lou, Lou, Uzi's over there. Um, he's over there. But they don't have a lot of artists that are thriving, and they definitely don't have a lot of female artists that are thriving. It's not like Atlantic that has like a roster of like thriving artists. Or it's not like... Um, Who's Nicki Minaj with Republic, you know, where they have like a roster of thriving artists. Like Rock Nation is a little bit thrifty. They usually get artists who are hot and then they sit them down or they get artists who um, are in a bad contract somewhere else. They save them and then like now they're forever a slave. But they need competition out the way. Um, Have Mercy wasn't really hitting on shit. They're not giving Normani or Chloe good songs. Like, I've noticed that from both teams. Um, neither lady are getting good songs to sing. Like, they're both very talented girls. They both can dance. They drop a, they drop a song, like, especially Normani. People, again, are rooting for her. She'll drop a song every now and then. It'll, it'll get some hype, and then she's back flat. And it's like, it's not consistent with Chloe. It's just she's she's more popular because of her affiliation, but she's not getting the promotion or the marketing dollars that she needs. And it's just like, well, how would she do that? How can her or her sister, Holly, really go far like they need to in the music industry when they signed a six album deal for a million dollars? You know, super slave deal. And I think their first album under Parkwood was Ungodly Hour. And it's just like, child, it's going to take y'all forever to, you know what I'm saying, get about that contract, especially to pay it back. Like, I can only imagine they've spent so, um, I've already, I can only imagine how much money they've spent, you know, just in producers and, and marketing and and clothes and videos and like all that stuff. Like they've definitely already blew blown through a million dollars. You know what I mean? And they don't have all their, they don't have every album out. Like I don't have, they recouped how the music isn't selling. Um, you know, they can try to recoup through endorsement deals. You know, Holly will be able to, I believe, recoup some of Parkwood's money with definitely with little mermaid. But as far as Chloe, it's just like, Chloe, how, because they're not pushing you hard enough to even make music. This girl is so multi-talented, but she can't even get awards off the shit that she produced, which means she has to hire out. So y'all are going to have to charge her. Like, and then you're not pushing her music. Like, you know, Beyonce is sabotaging Chloe so fucking obviously. Like, Chloe is not... Let me add this in here, too. A note about that damn movie or TV show, whatever the fuck they just did, but... Chloe is not getting the promotion that she needs. She's been at, like, after Have Mercy, she went to a few award shows. She did, she went on, like, a press tour. But, again, she hasn't had, like, she hasn't been dropping consistent hits. Even if that was going to be, like, her first, you know, intro, which people, 
seemed to like mildly enjoy she should have had like another hit right after that like a good r&b hit she has she's not making music that really showcases her voice and it's not her fault you can clearly tell beyonce is sabotaging her because it's like beyonce you sit your ass up on fucking renaissance and you sing plastic off the sofa which is probably a song that chloe wrote I know she's um, giving the credit to other people, but y'all don't know what the fuck is going on. Beyonce definitely got niggas in the basement turning out, you know what I'm saying, rhymes for her ass. Y'all don't know what the hell going on back there. You don't know who music this woman then really took. Khalees went in on her ass for taking music, and other people have too. Just like y'all shouldn't have fucking ignored that goddamn drummer who said Beyonce was doing all that fucking voodoo. Because she is. And then Chloe don't turn around and do a cover of Plastic Off the Sofa and sing, you know what I'm saying, sing her ass off. And it's just like, okay, so you can sing ballads, Beyonce, and you can sing slow music that showcases your vocals, but you got your motherfucking prodigy singing Treat Me and, and gyrating in a chair. Y'all think Chloe want to do that? No, I don't believe that. Beyonce is controlling her. Chloe is under MK Ultra Mind Control. And this is how you know she is. Because of all the times Chloe got her hair brown, the moment Have Mercy dropped with her debut single, she got that blonde hair. That lets you know all you need to know. And I did a whole article breaking that shit down, breaking down um breaking down the Jelani Day situation. I did my whole research on that. I really I made phone calls. I really did research. So if y'all go read the article, please know like I actually have facts up in there. Okay, that's why they can't fuck with the article. And when it comes to Chloe, I broke that video down. I did a whole decode of it and it was just as free Freemasonic and Illuminati as it could be. But yeah, like she had the blonde then and you know, she was doing her little dancing and her little ritual. And the moment the video came on, the reason why I really wouldn't listen to it and didn't want to watch the whole video all the way through, um, I high speed, like, scrubbed through it so I can get screenshots for the article. But I didn't want to watch it all the way through because the moment I saw Chloe, I could tell that was that Sasha Fierce demon in her. You could clearly see it, at least for me, if you have an open third eye. I could see that demon right through Chloe. And I was like, I already know that. I already know who that is. That's Sasha Fierce. You, I can. I don't even see Chloe. All I see is that demon. And what did Chloe say? Oh, I just turned to somebody else, and you know, I barely remember what happens after you know I do my little performances. But that's what she said in the interview, you know. And it, it would be, it would have Beyonce say, Oh, Sasha Fierce, you know, I just become somebody else. My alter ego. Cause they're talking about the MK Ultra. When they click out into other personalities and another spirit, the demons that are living inside of them take over them. Come on, it's so obvious. Chloe is a slave. I don't foresee her getting out of her contract um, or really getting the success that she wants. She might get out of her contract, but the Carter's going to make it hell for her. And how is she supposed to pay back her portion if... Y'all not really investing into this girl how she need to be investing into. Like, y'all not doing her promo like she need. Like, the way that they were pushing Beyonce when Beyonce went solo is how they should be pushing motherfucking Chloe. Like, how you think Nicki and Drake are where they are? They would not be where they are if Lil Wayne never, like, pushed them, if he never invested into them, if he didn't, like, have features with them. It's like, you, why is it even a question if, if Beyonce is sabotaging Chloe? When, like, Chloe should have had a fucking feature on Renaissance. If Beyonce was really trying to help Chloe and Holly, you know why? Has, why isn't she allowing them to d d uh, be on her, be on her mute, be on her albums, be on her singles? She Beyonce should have did features and vocals for Ungali Hour. Beyonce not doing videos with them. Beyonce not doing music with them. Like Beyonce not even helping. She don't even help her own motherfucking sister. I've been thought Beyonce and Solange did should have did a col uh, collab album, and I and I get it. It's not for Beyonce to save everybody's career. I'm just saying, Beyonce, you signed these girls. So if you really believe in their music, why the fuck didn't you, you know what I'm saying? Again, when, 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 how, how did we get introduced to Drake? Through the song, for me, through the song Every Girl with Lil Wayne. How did I get introduced to Nicki? 
she was on um she was on five star chick and she was on like again a lot of like young bedrock like a lot of young money singles because like they did mixtapes like Lil Wayne put his artists that he wanted to push on mixtapes like that's how we met Tyga he put them on mixtapes and like that put people onto them and that's how we found out about them and got and got on their music and he put a lot of marketing dollars and budgets like like cash money put a lot of money into uh, Nikki, Wayne, Drake, Tyga. It can't be disputed. Meanwhile, Beyonce is not doing that for her artists. And you would think that she would because you know Beyonce got that big bag. You know what I mean? Just like the truth is Jay-Z doing a better job. He didn't put money into, he didn't put money into Megan. You know, Megan already had a machine behind her, but Jay-Z did take her to new heights. Whether we like what, what, what the Carter camp did to 1501 or not. You know, he, he has helped Rihanna. He did catapult Rihanna. He did help Foxy Brown. He did put a mill on. If y'all remember her, you know, Beanie Single, Dame Dash. Like, well, Dame Dash really helped Jay-Z a lot. But he really did help Beanie Single, Beanie Single, Memphis Bleak, Kanye. Like, it's a lot of people who Jay-Z have put on. It's like, Beyonce, who have you put on? Like, cause you're really not putting Chloe and Holly on. The real truth is Chloe and Holly making a lot of their money escorting throughout Hollywood. Why you think they always showing up to like all of these award shows, but they barely got popping music. They be, be like Chloe be at award shows all dolled up that she not even performing at. She ain't got no music, nothing. Like why the fuck is y'all out in Cannes? Why the fuck is Megan Thee Stallion, Chloe and Holly out at, out at Cannes in France? Why the fuck are y'all at the Oscars? Like I get Holly, because she got a movie, but Megan Thee Stallion and all these other hoes at the Oscars, it's like, why y'all there? Because y'all escorting. The whole industry, the industry is pimps and hoes. And I know y'all hate to hear it, but the industry is run off of escorting. Like, a lot of these people, again, it's like, okay, if you don't make money off your music, and you haven't had a popping endorsement in the last two years, and you haven't been in a movie, you haven't had shit popping... For the last however long, but you you making enough money to still shuck and jive in Hollywood. So how do you do it? Because if you are making no money off music and you're not getting no endorsements, what money do you have to invest in anything? Yeah, you probably sell ass. Like, that's how most people do. When they go to these little, you know, after parties and award show after parties. And, yeah, yeah, we're going to so-and-so Grammy party. And then we're going to the to so-and-so after after Oscars party. And then we're going to the Met. And we're having an after party at the Met. That's because they, they doing rituals and they prostitute. Y'all better wake up. They've been talking about that shit all throughout Hollywood. So... Um, you know, Chloe and Holly, they have a slave deal. I'm also just thinking, again, where was y'all parents to help y'all negotiate this deal? Like, did y'all not have anybody on y'all corner to help y'all out? You know, why are y'all in this crazy ass record deal? You not getting invested into y'all doing, uh, especially Chloe, you doing humiliation ritual after humiliation ritual that got you super over sexualized. Like, what is this about? And it just really gives like my parents sold me for a double cheeseburger. And here's why I really think the Bailey's parents sold them because Tina is clearly one of their handlers. Tina knows always with them girls and she did make a cameo looking evil as fuck. Sorry if you heard me burp in the, in the have mercy video. And it's just like, you know, why the fuck you think, why the fuck you think Tina made a cameo? Because she a handler. She's Chloe's handler. She be on, you know, Chloe and shit. Instagram page all the time because she's a fucking handler. She's a madam. It's really sad. Like, it hurts. But it really is just sad because I'm like, where are y'all parents? But here's another thing I think. Because people will not tell you again the truth. I'm starting to believe that Chloe and Holly's... uh, I think that their parents may have been in like a spiritual debt or some type of debt to the Carters or the Nose family. I don't know. But something about it is weird. I think they're, they they had a reason to sell their kids. I think their parents were in some type of occult bullshit and they had to get their kids over and they sold their kids to the Carters. And maybe they didn't have to. Maybe they willingly sold them for, you know, for E-class bins and for whatever. But... 
is no matter what's going on, it just gives I sold my child. Whether I did it because I had to, whether I did it because I wanted to, it just seems like they've been handed over. And it really is so sad to watch because they are being so, so sabotaged. Um, I don't know where Chloe's career is going to be soon, but I don't think it's going to be you know, too prosperous because Beyonce is purposely not allowing her to be original. Everything down to like the little E thing with the names um, to just similar dance moves and her putting the Sasha Fierce demon in Chloe, like it's done by strategy, but it's done because Beyonce wants to give her no chance. If you you get this girl and you defame her and deface her or whatever, people really won't fuck with her at all. So by the time Blue comes out, like she just clears up all the competition. You know, if they if they continue to push Normani to the back, you know, she's already off the market. That's no competition. Because personally, I'm nervous for Chloe because I feel like Chloe is Blue's sacrifice. They may not merc Chloe, but she's definitely, I don't know if they're like energy harvesting her or like taking her talent or doing whatever they're doing something to her and i definitely feel like it's connected with blue ivy because it's very obvious that blue ivy is going to be the next prodigy because again she's she's performing in that the grammys blue ivy's performing at the oscars blue ivy already has a grammy blue ivy is getting features with her parents like chloe and holly aren't getting that they're not getting that. Megan's getting her Grammys. Rihanna got her Grammys. But Beyonce on your, your team, they, they don't have shit. They don't have shit. Your girls, like, all, and all Holly has is that Little Mermaid. You know, and that's going to be big. It's going to be a huge look. But as far as music, like, they drop music that, you know, you haven't promoted. Like, Ungali Hour came out, but Beyonce didn't promote that shit like she could have. And how she really could have promoted it is by fucking doing a feature with them. Did it for Megan, but no, did if you did even that Beyonce, you did for yourself because you only collab with Megan so you can get them fucking Grammys. You don't give a fuck about none of these bitches, but you dead ass wrong for um for signing these girls and then just like shitting on their music and and not promoting on Golly Hour like. Beyonce is still competing her dance self with these girls. Like, did these girls get a Grammy nom? They didn't win no awards, I don't think, for their music. Like, Beyonce has not really been doing her, her best for her artists. And it's just really, it's, it's pure sabotage and evil. Meanwhile, Blue Ivy is flourishing. And you know why? Because she's the one who they really like have the big, you know, prize for. They just need her competition out the way. And that's how you know Blue Ivy's on a come up. She's on her way. Like they're gonna put her in the spotlight soon because Beyonce is grooming her, you know, and she's already in with the elites. Um who is this? Oh. Um sorry, I had an email, but you can um you can see Blue Ivy's being groomed because even with that Tiffany's commercial, like they had the pizza symbolism. So she's definitely being groomed for the elite to get ready to take her take her place. Um, you know, take her mother's place. And it's just sad that the industry moves the way it does because people, you know, there's always gotta be a sacrifice um involved. So with Chloe, I don't foresee um, her going far unless she gets the fuck away from the Carters. And how is she going to do that? Because even if even if they let her out of her contract, she'll just have to be in more debt by another label. And Beyonce is definitely going to try to blackball her um, because she just doesn't want her to be competition for. Beyonce doesn't want her own artist to be competition for her. And she doesn't want her to be competition for Blue Ivy. Like, because that that's a tactic that the Knowles family and the Carters have been doing. Like, that's a trick that 
Matthew used to do. Like he did a lot of shady shit to help get a lot of other artists out of Beyonce's way so that way Beyonce could thrive. That's part of why there's that conspiracy that, you know, maybe the Carters did have a hand in Aaliyah's death. It's a lot of people who had a hand in it because just like, you know what I'm saying? Like Beyonce needed Aaliyah, Ashanti, and a couple other people out of the way. You know, that's why Kelly never like blew up because like they needed, they can't have Kelly blow up. They need Kelly to stay in her place. They need Chloe to stay in her place because Beyonce wants to be the only one in her league. You know, like it, the industry shows us that like there can only be like one queen rapper, like one, you know, one queen R&B girl, like especially when it comes to black women. So this is just old school, you know, Carter knows tactics of buying the competition or just doing things to get your competition out your way. And again, record labels do that all the time where they'll sign an artist and the artist is super excited, but it's really just a way to shelf you so that who they really want to invest in can pop. Um, I'm probably going to do Chloe. I might do Chloe, I don't know, Holly separately, just to really talk about some of the... Um, some of the rituals with the Little Mermaid, but please believe, like, all of that water that they did out in Dubai, and then, you know, all of the, the, the drunken love vocals, and now little and now Holly's gonna be in the Little Mermaid, you know, giving water energy, like, come on, y'all, it's so obvious that they're doing rituals right in front of your face. Um, I have some pictures, too, that I'm gonna show, um, of... Chloe and Holly and some of the symbolism and just the affiliation with um, Hollywood witches. I can do a separate video, I think, on them both and like some of the ties to um, Marina Abramovic. But I really just want to talk about Chloe today all on her own. Another thing is with the, with the show or the movie Swarm, you know, the back shots with, da with Damson Idris, Idris and then the her getting killed off shortly after complete humiliation ritual complete um sacrifice because just think about it you already just got some out on camera and you're supposed to be beyonce's artist beyonce's never represented super super sexual until jay-z took over as her manager and now she just she just got her artist out here so sexual it's just not a good look um, that was complete humiliation ritual for Chloe. It was another way to keep people attacking Chloe. Like Beyonce wants to completely allow people to attack and destroy Chloe. It's so obvious that it's Beyonce doing it. Like she's so evil. It's so obvious that she's doing it. Chloe just never has struck me as a super sexual freak. Her energy is very good girl, very reserved. She's super soft spoken. And she could really sing and she could she's really so so talented. But it's the MK Ultra programming and the beta sex kit and programming and just the complete sabotage as to why she presents a certain way to the public. Beyonce, you evil and you dead ass wrong. And Chloe girl, I just gonna pray for you. I want the best for you. But also, here's one last reason why I know there's so much more to this story and that there's Illuminati debts that gotta get paid and it's really, really deeper than what than what we see because what are the odds that Chloe is playing a young Beyonce and fighting temptations and now in her career she's still in Beyonce's shadow you know she's still playing like a younger Beyonce still you know you just you know what I mean just being Beyonce Jr you know why because that is the ritual that they have over her life the ritual that they have over her career which lets you know that there's something more to it it's giving predetermined or predestined this is why y'all need to stop running y'all ass over there to Hollywood because them people really do dark magic and black magic and spells and voodoo. I'm so serious. And y'all better wake the fuck up. Y'all think Chloe out here acting like this because she wants to? No, it's because Beyonce got that bitch fucking soul in a jar. Comment below what you think. Let's talk.